Mrs. Adams is a whiz on a sewing machine. And it's partly because she knows her materials and how to get the most out of them. Her daughter Nancy has hurried home from school today, for she has just started her first semester of home economics. And she has asked her mother to help her learn more about clothes and cloth. What are the advantages of the different kinds of cloth? How do you distinguish between different materials? Nancy wants to make a new skirt. So her mother agreed to show her a little bit about basic fibers, yarns, and textiles. Mother has three samples ready to show Nancy. She wants Nancy to look at each material, to feel it, to see what differences she observes. There's wool gabardine. You've heard of that and cotton gabardine. They are both popular fabrics for many purposes. And there's a relatively new material, rayon gabardine. How can we distinguish between these materials if they are not labeled? There are simple tests that will help us identify them. They are easy to do at home with only a candle and a simple magnifier. Take two threads from the wool, for example, and see what happens when they are burned. Wool smells like burned hair or feathers. Just remember, wool, which is something like animal hair, smells like hair when burned. When the ends are magnified, we can see brownish balls on the ends of the fibers. The wool ball crushes easily and just powders off, too. These two characteristics identify wool the burned hair odor, and the brown, easily crushed ball. And because both threads tested the same, we know the sample is all wool. We did test two, warp and filling. How do we tell warp from filling? The warp threads are those which run the length of the fabric. The filling threads are the ones woven in across the warp, or the width of the cloth, from selvage to selvage. It is difficult to tell the warp from filling threads on a small sample. But if you look closely, you'll see that the warp threads, here running vertically, are more tightly twisted and heavier than the filling threads. Now, we'll test the warp and filling threads of this acetate rayon. When burned, its odor is sourish. Remember, this is acetate rayon, different from regenerated rayon. Burning acetate rayon forms this blacker, very shiny ball on the fibers. But the ball on the rayon fibers is hard, very hard. So it's easy to tell the difference between the acetate rayon ball and the powdery wool ball. If you heat a whole piece of acetate rayon, it melts, almost like sealing wax. That's why you must never use a hot iron on acetate rayon. Now let's test the cotton yarn. Cotton smells like burning waste paper. No black or brownish ball, though. Nothing much but scorched-looking ends. You yourself can make the simple test to distinguish wool and acetate rayon. But the results from burning cotton are the same as from two other fibers, linen and regenerated rayon. Mrs. Adams' book on textile says that technical tests are needed to tell the difference between fibers of cotton, linen, and regenerated rayon. So labels on cloth are important. Now that Nancy has learned a little of how to identify materials, she is wondering which material to select for her new skirt. Her choice should depend on the use she expects to make of the skirt, and sometimes on the design. One of the outcomes about wool is its warmth. This is due to the resiliency of natural fibers. This springiness of wool makes little pockets in the finished material, and the pockets hold a layer of still air, which is a good insulator. The resiliency of wool is a result of a natural crimp in the wool fibers. This crimp also makes wool easy to twist or spin into a firm yarn. Cotton fibers have no air-trapping crimp, but the twist helps make cotton spin easily and tightly. Rayon and linen fibers, however, are so smooth 
that it is hard to spin them into a tight, firm yarn or thread. Tight spinning makes stronger yarn and more durable cloth. Worsted yarn is more tightly spun than woolen, so worsted fabrics like Aberdeen are more durable than fabrics made of the softer woolen yarns. Besides the spinning of the fibers, the weave has a lot to do with durability too. That white broadcloth is called plain weave. This is cotton broadcloth. This is a typical twill weave, the familiar blue jeans. The diagonal rib is a mark of the twill weave, a durable fabric in many materials. We have looked at plain weave and twill. The third basic weave in cloth construction is the satin weave. The warp threads always pass over more than three filling threads at a time, and each new filling advances more than one warp. The long yarns, or floats, reflect light readily. That's what gives our satin slips their smooth feel and luster. In addition to weave, the color of textiles is an important factor. And to be able to buy materials intelligently, we should know how color gets into material. This plaid pattern is a result of weaving yarns that were dyed the various colors before they were woven. The color of each yarn is the same, from salvage to salvage. That's easy to understand. The curtains are called print. That means the original solid color of plain material was printed from roll presses like magazines. Pull out a single thread and look at it closely. You'll see several different shades or colors on each thread. That's how you can always tell a printed material from a yarn dyed material. Yarn dyed materials are less likely to run or bleed in laundering. It's wisest to use prints for things that won't be laundered very often. Have you ever noticed how some fabrics soil easily and others do not? Here's one reason. The soft, fuzzy finish of the flannel catches and holds dirt. Hard twill does not. The fuzziness of flannels is due to a process called napping. This will give you an idea of how it is done. The extra ends pulled up on the surface give it that fluffy, warm appearance. It looks and is warmer than the same fabric would be unnapped because that fuzz forms an insulating layer of still air. But cotton napping will pack down with use or laundering because cotton fibers are not as resilient as wool fibers. Remember? Great care should be taken in laundering heavily nap material to avoid packing or felting the nap. And it should never be ironed. Nancy is wondering exactly why you can't launder all materials. Why must some things go to the dry cleaner? Heated wool is very sensitive to hot water and the alkali of strong soaps. These destroy its elasticity, its springiness, and shrinking and felting occur. One wool sock got washed with cotton socks, by mistake. The other was washed correctly, in lukewarm water with mild soap. On the next wash day, Nancy learns that rayons wash well, but lose about half their strength when wet. Wet rayons should be handled very carefully and should be turned inside out and ironed on the wrong side to prevent iron shine. Iron temperature is very important, too. We saw how excess heat melts rayon. Cotton and linen launder well. They can be washed in very hot water, and so are called the most hygienic fabrics. They can be ironed with a much hotter iron than is used on rayon. But what about the material for Nancy's skirt? Can you remember what she has learned about fibers and how to tell them apart? About yarns and how they are woven into different cloth materials? Besides color, design, and price, Nancy will think of warmth, wearability, and washability. Then she'll walk with a well-dressed air. <laughs>